No, I think this is for you. Uh, do you do you know any uh, cost estimates of keeping nuclear waste safe for 240,000 years? Uh, if, if not, why hasn't there been a study? Okay. Well, uh, Kevin, uh, you, well, you start. I'll that. take a first whack at it. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's a great question. Oftentimes, you know that two cents or whatever figure they put on the price per kilowatt hour for nuclear electricity certainly does not include what Chris Williams in Vermont jokes about as uh, fences and guard dogs forever. I mean, has, has the dog food been included in the cost per kilowatt hour of radioactive waste that has to be safeguarded till the end of time? And you know, 240,000 years does capture plutonium 239's half-life times 10, probably times 20 would be safer, 480,000 years. But we forced the Environmental Protection Agency in court, a coalition of environmental groups represented by Jeff Fettis of NRDC, to admit that the hazard at Yucca Mountain will persist for a million years into the future. And of course, that still excludes uh, iodine-129 with a hazardous persistence of 157 million years. So the costs of really protecting the biosphere forever are incalculable. Right. So one last thing I'll say before I turn it over is there was a study done by the Government Accountability Office in 2009, I think, September 2009, that admitted that the dry cask storage at the reactor sites, they were doing a comparison of costs for yucca, for centralized interim storage, and for dry cask storage on site. And they had an amazing chart towards the end that showed dry cask storage on site indefinitely into the millennia. And they admitted that we're going to have to replace the dry casks perhaps once a generation, perhaps once a hundred years. What, what's the cost of that? It's, uh, it's skyrocketing into the future. It's very true that on a discounted cash flow basis, this planet is not worth saving. Oh, what? <laughs> Easy for you to say, Grandpa. You're on your way out. You're oh, going to no, leave I, us with all of it. No, please, i got to run it. Yeah, i got to run it. Thank you. Um, wow. Uh, for Herb Abrams, uh, what does ringworm have to do with low-dose exposure? We saw one Israel ringworm study in your, in your graph. What was what? Uh, ringworm. Israel wing, ringworm. It apparently it was in one of your early graphs. And that was ringworm. The, the, the study uh, on ringworm really had to do with the exposure uh, the radiation of the scalp. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we used to use radiation for certain benign disorders, thymic enlargement, for example, which was really a myth. But ringworm was an important target. And the scattered radiation hit the thyroid gland, and the incidence of thyroid tumors in that group was high. And that was the report. But that, that was a long time ago. Uh, let, let me uh, comment on that on the the ringworm aspect of, of uh, nuclear waste. I mean, the 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 the, the real issue uh, with nuclear uh, trash is the longevity and the future costs really don't impress future uh, current uh, people. But what does impress them is the fact that the government has failed to do what it promised. It's the, the promise was that this trash would be taken away. And you can appeal to the average person and just picture 30 years of garbage piling up in his or her backyard. And that has an impact. I, I think it's really important that we frame arguments in, in language that reaches the average person. And, 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 you know, when the question came up about small nuclear reactors, well, they still produce radioactive trash that we don't know what to do with. And we need to hammer that argument home in every case. The future Amen. costs of, of, of the radioactive trash is a number that has not been calculated, frankly. The gentleman is correct. I put dry casks in in the early 90s when we decommissioned the... the uh, the plant in, in Sacramento, which is, the, by the way, the only nuclear plant that's been shut down in the middle of its life by a vote of the people, and we put the 
spent fuel in dry cast, but they're going to have to replace those in 20 years. There is no money to do there. The argument that isn't made is that people are concerned about the long-term debt. And we ought to relate the nuclear trash issue. It is a long-term debt that is huge in numbers, and we're putting it off on our kids and our grandkids. And it's not a theoretical thing. It's not something that maybe will happen. It's not just a couple of guards watching it. It is a fact that those casts will wear out and they have to be replaced. There's no money to do it. There's nobody to be responsible. This is an irresponsible act by this generation that is throw, that's leaving trash for our children with no money to pay for it. It is worse than the national debt because that's just paper and money. This is radioactive material that we don't know what to do with. We have no right that. This is a powerful argument that we're not focusing on. 